Hey guys, how's it going? Dude here, I am back with another video. Today we delve into the Men in Black. A lot of you will be very familiar with the Men in Black. Certainly the concept of the Men in Black, thanks to these guys. Now don't get me wrong, I love the Men in Black movies, mainly the first one, the other ones lose their way a little bit, but then again that's just Hollywood. But I have a theory behind why the Men in Black movies were made. Because when you look into what the Men in Black apparently are, which obviously we will delve into into this video, it seems a bit weird if they're always trying to be hidden in the shadows and keep things under wraps. Why, why would there be movies made about them? Well, I have a theory, and it actually links into aliens themselves as well. If you think about the alien, right, there is always this kind of big head, big eyes, small mouth, the stereotypical alien, right? It's been woven throughout media and movies and comics, etc for the last 150 years. What if those are the aliens we have come into contact with and the reason that this image is recycled so much is that if they ever came back or made themselves known to the greater population, i.e. out of the government's control, there would be a lessened hysteria because it wouldn't be like, oh my fucking God, what on earth is that? It's, oh, aliens actually do look like that. That's mad, mental. So is there a similar thing going on with the men in black? Is that why Hollywood made those movies? So just in case the men in black make themselves known, you see Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. Enough about my theories in Hollywood when it comes to the men in black. Let's delve into the actual cases and actual run-ins with the men in black. First ever recorded encounter with the Men in Black was from 1947 by a gentleman known as Harold Dahl. Now Harold Dahl was on his boat with his son and dog in the Puget Sound, which is a lake in America, when all of a sudden he saw six donut shaped UFOs in the sky. He began taking photos of them, when all of a sudden one of the donuts collapsed and the debris actually hit his son in the arm and sadly killed their dog. Later on after the incident, Harold was actually visited by the men in black who threatened him into silence and destroyed any photographs that he took that day of the six donut shaped UFOs. And this is the theme that you will find with these men in black. Whenever there is a UFO sighting, it seems the men in black will turn up and threaten you into silence. Next up we have Albert Bender. Now Albert Bender was a US Air Force pilot in World War II and he had a fascination with UFOs so much so that him and his brother in 1952 founded the International Flying Saucers Bureau which looked into and researched all things UFO and unexplained and they had great success. They were really making waves within the UFO aviation industry which could have potentially propelled our technology forward by centuries had it not been for just one year later he suddenly shut it all down. Around nine years later Bender revealed that in March of 1953 he was approached by three men in black. These men apparently visited him at his home and communicated with him telepathically. He received a metal disc from them with instructions. These three men apparently shared insights into the UFO phenomena and actually the origins of the UFOs as well. Whatever the men in black shared with him that day truly shattered his fascination with UFOs and made him terrified of what they truly are and are truly capable of. He also claimed the men in black were in fact aliens from the planet Kazik. UFO intelligences are not simply extraterrestrial but ultra terrestrials. Entities from unimaginable other dimensions of reality. Worse, they definitely do not like us at all. Human beings are like ants trying to view reality with very limited perceptive equipment. We are biochemical robots helplessly controlled by forces that can scramble our brains, destroy our memories and use us in any way they see fit. They have been doing it to us forever. Spooky stuff. And just think about that for a second. Think about an ant and how irrelevant they are to us and what they must perceive the world to be and yet look at what we are doing out of their perception. They can't perceive all the things that human beings are capable of. Maybe we can't perceive all the things that aliens are capable of. 
Fast forward to 1967 when Robert Richardson was driving along some country roads with his wife when all of a sudden there was a head-on collision with a UFO. But the weird thing was as soon as the impact was made, it simply disappeared into the night sky with no explanation. Robert got out of his car and collected a piece of debris that was from the other object that smashed into his car. He soon handed it over to authorities to be tested. A week later, after the incident, Incident, men in black turned up to his house and they were not pleased to learn that he had handed over the piece of metal. In fact, the men in black threatened him and said, if you want your wife to stay as pretty as she is, you'd better get the metal back. Now, fortunately, Richardson never saw or heard from the men in black again. But clearly, if there is ever any debris from UFOs, the men in black want it in their possession and their possession only. In 1968, a man by the name of Jack Robinson was a UFO researcher. Again, anyone that's looking into this stuff seemed to be primary targets of the men in black. In this case, there was a solitary man in black that stalked their house and stood outside continuously continuously for three days stood opposite their household. A friend of the Robinsons took it upon herself to go outside and sneakily take a picture of the man in black and this is that image. Another encounter with the men in black is in 1976 when Dr. Hopkins was, would you believe it, researching into a local UFO incident when he received a very strange call from a man claiming to be from a UFO investigations group. This man sounded very strange on the phone, rather monotone, but as they had a shared interest, they began conversating about their findings on this local UFO incident. Later, when the phone call was done, Hopkins obviously hung up the phone and was startled to realize that as he did this, a man was walking towards his front door. When he opened the door and spoke to this man, he realized it was the same man that was on the phone. Now understand that in the 70s, there was no mobile phone, so it was very odd that he'd literally hung up the phone and then this man was at the door. The doctor described the man as wearing a neat black suit, bald with no eyebrows or eyelashes. He had incredibly smooth, almost plastic-like white skin and and oddly rosy red lips. His speech was expressionless and monotone. Even more bizarre was what the man in black did next. A very odd intimidation tactic. He asked Hopkins to get out a coin, a copper coin. And before Hopkins' eyes, the man in black turned it from silver to blue, eventually blurry, before dematerializing completely and disappearing in Hopkins' hand. Once this act was done, the man in black simply said, you will halt all investigation into the UFO incident. And it's safe to say Hopkins, intimidated beyond belief, did so. There are so many incidents on the internet, including Dan Aykroyd, of course, famous from Ghostbusters. He is massively into his UFOs and paranormal stuff. He'd done an amazing podcast with Joe Rogan. I highly recommend you go and check that out. He was doing a series in 2002 where he was delving into UFOs and stuff. And apparently he was on a break from filming on his lunch looked up across the road, a man in black staring at him, scowling at him in fact, and Dan Aykroyd looked away for a moment, looked back again and the man was gone. Only a few hours later, producers came to Dan and said, look, we've been told from people above that we are not allowed to film anymore. It's all being scrapped. The episodes we've done so far will not be released. The series is over. Was Dan delving too deeply into the UFO phenomena? One of the most pivotal pieces of evidence in the Men in Black mythos comes from Hotel CCTV. You may well have seen this before. Basically, a hotel manager and a security guard at the hotel near Niagara Falls saw a triangular UFO outside the hotel, reported it, and then not long after, the hotel was hounded by two very mysterious men in black. It's said that they terrified the staff with their appearance. Again, tall, imposing, wearing black, almost animatronic and monotone in their voice. No definitive features in their face, smooth, pale white skin, almost doll-like, red lips, no eyelashes, no eyebrows, and the two men that entered the hotel looked like identical twins, and again were hounding anyone for information on UFOs and trying to shut them up as quickly as possible. But they slipped up this time because CCTV caught them, and here is that eerie footage. It's 
so there we go guys. I mean, obviously I'm delving into UFOs a little bit, so maybe there'll be a knock at my door with men in black asking me to shut the hell up. If I stop doing alien videos, then you'll know that that is the case. But what are they? This is what fascinates me. Are they aliens trying to hush up the public that accidentally see what they don't want you to see? Are aliens already among us and it's trying to be kept secret? Are the government working in tandem with aliens and this is all a massive cover up. They're very animatronic and monotone in voice. Maybe they are robots. Perhaps it's aliens or the government itself trying to put a technological halt to human development, putting us back centuries. Because things like that UFO bureau being shut down, stopping people from looking into the aviation behind these sources would propel us forward, certainly in aviation and technology. So maybe it's aliens trying to keep us dumb. What do you think? Is it all bollocks? What do you think about the men in black that is what i want to know guys i also want to know did you enjoy this video if you did please do let me know down below if you want to become a patron it's an amazing way to support me as a creator that is all down below i stream on twitch.tv for slash duty rhino so often basically every single day so you can always catch me on there massive thank you from me guys the support has been incredible it continues to be incredible let's keep this ball rolling i really appreciate you guys thank you so much look out for the men in black i'll see you very soon sweet one geese